it. It's a bad spot right here, huh? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Champaign, Illinois. I'm Scott Methlin alongside Nate Garlock as we get ready for the Midwest Professional Basketball Association game between the Champaign Storm and the Lima Express. The Swarm, the defending champions, Nate, have yet to win a game in this 2016 season. While, of course, Lima, their first year in the league, they've got one in the win column so far. Yeah, it's been a rough go so far for the Swarm this year, and the Express haven't got off to a much better start, but they were able to get on the win column last Sunday by defeating the Blues, and they're hoping to build that momentum going forward here tonight. I know that the Swarm have added a couple of players. That seemed to be the problem in the opener that I saw, that they had no depth, and these players are playing a little too much for Coach John Spasia. Uh, what, what can you tell us about the Lima team in their first three ball games? Uh, for Lima, it's been a lot of the fast start, having a hard time controlling those leads in the second half. They've gotten off very fast, built leads up. They had a 17-point lead against the River Sharks in the opening game, also had a lead against the Groove in the second game of the year, but weren't able to hold on to those leads. Last Sunday, they did a little bit better job. They built that lead. They did let the Blues come back, but they figured out how to keep that lead later in the game and ended up winning big going away. So right now for them, it's learning how to play with that lead, keep the lead, and hopefully be able to come away with a victory. All right, well, we're going to check the starting lineups, have the play-by-play -play for you shortly as you're watching from Parkland College here in Champaign, Illinois, on MPBA.TV. again mixing sauces hot barbecue to parmesan garlic and back again you're not on the same page of the playbook are you it's time to speak up next time lover boy goes to mix set him straight we're gonna stop mixing sauces now okay thank you grab a seat the game is up Go from a wild wing swing spear sport
There he goes again, mixing sauces. Hot barbecue to Parmesan garlic and back again. You're not on the same page of the playbook, are you? It's time to speak up. Next time lover boy goes to mix, set him straight. We're gonna stop mixing sauces now, okay? Thank you. Grab a seat. The game is up. Both of the wild wings, wings, spear, sport. Welcome back to Champaign, Illinois against Scott Medlin with Nate Garlock as we get set for the Champaign Swarm and the Lima Express in the Midwest Professional Basketball Association. We're meeting the starting lineups right now. And we get started with the Express at one and two, their coach is Mark Anderson. Kyle Meyer is first out for them, a 6'6", 215-pounder. Kyle Meyer, Helton, 6'6", 205, averaging 24 points a game. David Atkinson, 6'8", 225, at about eight points a game. And number 22 is Cordero Ballard, 6'4", 200 pounds, 26.3 points a game for Ballard. And now the homestanding Champagne Swarm, 0-3, coached by John Spasia. Oliver McGlade is a 5'11", or 87 pound. A pounder, that is 15.7 points per ball game. Booker, Booker Stoudmeyer, 6'205", averaging 14.7 today. Stoudmeyer from Northwoods University. Here's the reigning player of the week in the MPBA, Michael Rogers, 6'6", 240, 28.3 points a game. That's second in the league. Rogers from Valparaiso University. Jordan Walker, a local product, 6'6", 190, averaging 18 points a ball game. Walker played his high school ball here in Champaign for a couple of years, finished up at Walsh University. And the final starter out for the Swarm, Adrian Coleman, 6'6", 212 pounder, 19 points a ball game. Coleman from Bethune Cookman. And we're about to get this one underway from Champaign. Lots of action in the MPBA this weekend, including one game last night. Talk about that as we go along. Again, the Swarm looking for victory number one. They'll be in the white uniform, home standing white for the Swarm, and the red uniforms, the Express. And we'll get it tipped up here. Devon Taylor Bunton. No, check that. That's Atkinson in the center jump. And the tip controlled by the Champagne Swarm. Oliver McGlade runs the point pretty much for this Swarm team. This is Stoudmeyer to the basket. That comes up a little short. Elliott pulls it out of there for the Express, and they'll have their first possession. They bounce it into Meyer. He gives it back up. 
three ball from Elliott. Too hard, long rebound to McGlade. And a miss layup on the other end, looking for a foul there, was Coleman. As the ball is tipped out of bounds there, and it'll still be an express basketball. It was a nice job without moving without the ball that time for the express, trying to cut to the basket, trying to get that easy layup. Unfortunately, couldn't quite handle it, wasn't able to finish. But they're going to maintain possession here, see if they can't capitalize. Down low, Meyer. Turns around, the baby hook looks pretty good. And that's where he's his most dangerous. He likes working down there low in the paint. He likes trying to get his body in the other guys, see if he can't get to the rim. And that's where you're going to see him spend the most of the night trying to get most of the points at. There's a nice cut to the hoop in the first basket for, again, the player of the week in the MPBA. Michael Rogers is on the board, and we're tied up at two. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch all night long. Michael Rogers and Cody Ballard going at it, both great players in the league trying to see what they can do to get their other team to win today. Another offensive rebound there for the Express, but they can't convert it. Still have the ball underneath their own basket, though. A minute and a half in here from Champaign. This is Atkinson right to the hoop and an easy two there. That's what he brings to the game. So, you know, he's a big man, but he likes to take that three ball. So when he post when he uh, gets positioned like that, like he's going to shoot, his defender has to come out and try to defend. That time he was able to draw his defender up and able to bring it back down and go to the rim for the basket. McGlade's three not there. Walker's going to take it at the hoop. He can't get that one to fall. And clearing the ball for the express was Ballard, but it's knocked away from him. Again, out of bounds for the Express, leading four to two here. Two minutes in, as we get settled in for uh, what we expect to be a pretty good ball game. Pull up shot there is missed. That was Ballard, quickly down the other way. Nice pass and a jam there. Two-handed flush for Rodgers. He's got all four of the swarm points so far. Rodgers is such a talented player. He moves well without the ball. He's got great eyes all over the floor. Saw the lane there. His teammates did a great job of finding him as he cuts to the basket. And they're out of control with it. And a charge. Easy call there as Hilton had nowhere to go. Swarm basketball. Early going so far, it's been Rodgers who's kept his team in the game so far. It's early, still in the first quarter, but he's done all the scoring for him. Then he come down defensive end. He's been very active, poking balls away, trying to see if he couldn't get some blocks. And that time, jarring the charge to get the ball, get the turnover for his team. Rodgers, 240 pounds at 6'6", and there he goes again at the hoop. They cannot stop him. He's he's so impressive. He's so quick without the ball. It's almost deceptive. You wouldn't think a man of his size can move that fast. But it's a great job of getting around players and finding openings for his teammates. Half a dozen for him, and that's all the swarm points. 6 4 now at the nine minute mark, first quarter. Meyer, kick out. Cut the baseline off there, and a walk is called. You won't see that too often. Atkinson with the turnover. It worked for him a couple possessions ago. Thought he'd try it again. This time, he got his feet moving before he got the ball down, and unfortunately, another turnover for the Express. McGlade goes to work for the Swarm. Will pull up from the foul line, and he's got his first Oliver basket. McGlade. And the first Swarm player to score besides Rodgers. 8-4 now. Champagne over Lima. Whoa, that was nearly a walk there by Meyer, but he finally gains control and gets the bucket. He's so good with his feet. He never stops. He's always moving, never moves that pivot foot, always trying to find an opening. That time, even though he almost lost it coming in, was able to maintain it, moved his feet around, got around a defender, and got up to the basket. Coleman shook, shaking loose there for the swarm, but they fouled him before he could get a shot off. The foul goes against Atkinson, and that's our first one on either team. That's a good sign, maybe. Don't want to have too many whistles tonight as McGlade handles it for the Swarm. 
Pulls up from deep and has the first three of the ball game. And the Swarm like to shoot three-pointers. They got a lot of guys who aren't afraid to pull up behind the line. So the Express are going to have to make sure that they get out to cover those or they're not going to be afraid to pull them up. And if you let them do that, too many fall down, this lead is going to grow and you can get out of a game early. 11-6 the lead and the foul on Stoudmeyer there for the Swarm. His first team's first and out of bounds again. The Express will reset here. Elliott. Now right side drive by Helton. They cut him off there. And a very deep three is good by Ballard. Wow. Ballard hasn't been the greatest for the three-point line so far this year. He's only shooting 31% from behind the line, but he is not afraid to pull it up. And as you can see there, he really has no range. He can go as far out as he wants. He still feels confident shooting that three ball. Timeout called at the 721 mark. We'll take a break as well with the Swarm leading the Express 11 to 9 from Parkland College in Champaign, Illinois. You're watching Midwest Professional Basketball Association on MPBA.TV. Back in Champaign, where the Swarm have an early lead, 11-9 over the Express from Lima, Ohio. As we said, one and two coming in for Coach Mark Anderson, his first year at the helm, obviously, of a first-year team. John Spacia taking over the 2015 uh, champions, that's right. The Swarm from last year won the playoff with a different head coach as the Swarm will try to work it inside. That one's partially blocked though, but right back into the hands of Rogers. Great job of staying with his shot that time, even though the first one got blocked, he didn't get discouraged, stayed with it, was able to get the offensive board for the two. Ballard scores for the Express. He's got five, the lead two at 13-11 for the Swarm. Walker to the hoop, too hard. And the Swarm with numbers, they'll slow it up a little bit here. Helton to the corner for Elliott. And that one was out of bounds. Looked like Coleman tried to go over the back. We're going to get a first substitute into the ball game for Lima. Aaron Cross, 6'7", 215 into the game for Lima. Across from the University of Northwestern Ohio. They have a couple of players from that school on this express team. It makes for easy recruiting for Coach Anderson <laughs> as it's right there in town, just down the street from where we play our games in Lima. Turnover number two, as you saw the pressure applied there by the Swarm. And they have the basketball with a two-point lead. Down to six and a half to play in the first quarter and what has been a low scoring game compared to the ones I've seen so far. There's a call away from play. And it's on Cross. He got into the scorebook right quick. Both these teams have had a lot of, uh, a lot of success so far earlier in the season on the offensive side. It's been the defensive side where they've had to, had to make some adjustments and see if they weren't able to uh, make some changes. So nice far early in this cut. game, it looks like they've been able to do that. And right now, Michael Rogers is everything that he's been 
built up to be. He's doing everything for his team right now. Another great cut to get to the basket, and the Express are going to have to find a way to slow him down. Pull up jumper there, missed by Elliott. Swarm trying to run up the floor in a hurry. Coleman now way back out in front, and Roger misses the three. That's not his game. Nice pass and an easy bucket there from Meyer. Meyer. Nice job running the floor that time by the Express, keeping their heads up, finding Meyer open underneath. Jordan Walker goes to work on the other end, didn't get it to drop though. Walker is a stat sheet filler. We'll talk about that later as the beautiful entry pass and another easy Meyer. basket for Meyer. It's like we talked about earlier, he does most of his damage right there on the inside. And so far here in the first quarter, he's been able to have a lot of luck and a lot of success getting to the basket for the twos. Tie game at 15, shot missed badly from outside there. And the Express have a chance to grab the lead back. Foul out in front. Foul's on Jordan Walker. That's on Walker. Number one on him, second on the team. Number 20, James McClain. And newcomer to the swarm on the floor for the first time. That's James McLean. He's only played uh, two of the three swarm games so far. Averaging about 17 minutes a game, but it's taken some of the pressure off of the front seven for this swarm team as the shot is missed from the outside by the Express. With the ball is Hart also into the game for the Swarm. Lester Hart. Walker on the right side. Out back to left, they swing it. And another miss from outside. That was McLean. Elliott will slow it up and reset the offense. That's Ballard with a jumper, no. Long rebound comes out to Walker for the Swarm. Tied at 15, we're down to four minutes for the first quarter. And again, that is not a lot of points for this league. They're in the 40s, and there's a beauty. That's a three. Stoudmeyer with the basket. Great job of moving the ball around that time for the Swarm, getting it around a couple of times. They thought they might have the open look when they didn't, got rid of it quick. Was able to get the three-pointer at the end of it. Hopefully you're able to see on your screens that three lines out here as the shot is missed. The tap by Meyer, no. They keep at it, and Helton gets the basket. It's going to be big for Express. They need to get Helton moving going. So far it's been only Ballard and Meyer for the scoring, and Helton's one of their big ones. He averages 24 points a game. They're going to need him to start getting into this game so they can hopefully open up some sort of lead here on the Swarm. Hart from deep. Doesn't get it. Meyer tips it to a teammate. And the Express will run it up the right side. This is Elliott with it. Drive to the hoop for Ballard and a foul on the way in is on the swarm. It's on Stoudmeyer. Number two on Stoudmeyer. For Daryl Ballard, correction 25. Still out of bounds for the Express. Cross back in there, or did he ever leave? James Helton to the hole. Easy layup with the right hand on the left side. Nice move by Helton that time, moving through the lane, getting to the bucket. And the Swarm brought three new guys in right there before that offensive possession. Nice little alley-oop. And Walker has his first basket of the night, averaging 18 a game. Swarm's having a lot of success moving behind the defense, expresses and keeping their eyes open, not their heads up. Guys are able to get to that backdoor lane, and Express are going to have to fix that, or Swarm's going to have a lot of success. It's going to be an easy night getting to the bucket for them. 2019, Swarm, three ball misses, a scramble for the rebound. Comes loose to the Express. The jumper right side is good by Aaron Cross. Aaron Cross. The Express back to the lead by one. 
Ball kicked there and take it away. One on two, nope. Again, they hit the offensive glass, cannot get it down, and finally, it goes to Cross for another basket. Great job that time by the Express staying with it, making sure that they cleaned up everything coming off the glass. Hand check called out in front. Three point Express lead. Aaron Cross is second. And Cross has number two. That's only, what, four on the team? Timeout on the floor. And a timeout called at the 141 mark. We're in the first quarter here from Champaign tonight. And it is Lima over the Champagne Swarm so far, 23-20. You're watching MPBA.TV. Back in Champaign, minute 41 to go in the first quarter. And the Express from Lima lead the Champaign Swarm by three. Champaign ball after the timeout. Jordan Walker brings it into play. Oliver McGlade back on the floor for Champaign. As he works the right side of the Express defense. Hart still out there, he's got it, and gave it up. Pickpocketed by Devon Taylor Bunton. And the Express can grab what would be the biggest lead of the game with a basket here. 17 footer is well off though. Missed by Marcus Montag. Am I saying that right, or is that Montague? It's Montague, actually. Montague, yeah, okay. He's, he's, the, uh, he's the newest member of the Express. He's only been with the team about a week and a half, two weeks now. So they're trying to get him involved in the game plan. I know Mark Anderson was uh, thought real highly of the young man, especially in their win last week uh, on Sunday against the Blues, and they're really hoping he can be a big part of their offense moving forward. That's one thing the coaches in this league really have to deal with, a ever-changing roster. Those guys can go to a, another team, another league, really quickly. There's a fumble down the middle, but in the right spot at the right time was Silas Mills. It's a good job staying with it, even though it was a loose ball, was able to get it back up. You know, you're talking about players moving around quickly, and that's that's a good problem to have. That means we have a lot of talented players here in the league, and they get a lot of good looks from, from a couple of other higher up leagues, and these kids move on a lot. Nice little double team out in front and an easy basket again for Coleman. That's his first basket, averaging 19 a game. And just like that, the Swarm have the lead back. Miss from the corner. That was Helton and it's Swarm ball with just 14 ticks to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, you just saw points off a turnover there for the Swarm and that's kind of been a a bit of a trouble spot for the Express early here, early going so far in the year. They've given up a lot of turnovers, almost 14 a game, and it, it leads to a lot of easy buckets for the other team, just like it did there. McGlade looks like he's hunting a shot, and he got it up there with three seconds, two, and at the buzzer. Ooh, uh, that one would have counted, but it bangs off the backboard, and we have our first quarter in the books. Champagne 24, 
and Lima 23 after one from Champaign on MPBA.TV. Back in Champaign, 24-23 as we head for quarter number two. Scott Medlin, Nate Garlock with you tonight. Hope you're enjoying watching MPBA basketball. Nice little reverse there for Cross. He's come off the bench with six quick points. That's been a lift for the Express team so far. Both these teams are kind of have, are struggling a little bit on the offensive end, getting off to the quick starts they're used to. Both these teams average over 100 points a game, and right now they're a little bit below that. So it's going to be important that guys like Cross step up who aren't used to having that many points in a game and hopefully get their teams back on, back on the right track. Six lead changes in this one already. And a couple of ties. As the Swarm will have the ball in front of the express bench. Rogers with 10 first quarter points to lead the Swarm. Eight for Meyer. And there's an offensive foul. You can see that push off there by... Rogers. Trying to get a little bit of separation there, see if he couldn't get, get some room to get the shot up, and unfortunately got his shoulder down, pushed off a little bit, and the ref caught him. That guy is put together. If you get a shoulder or a, even a forearm from him, you're gonna feel it. Yeah, he is a big, strong guy, and you know he, he's definitely a lot to handle down, down low or on the perimeter. It's one of those guys that uh, every team would love to have. A lot of dribbling there, and then a bad pass near Steele by Coleman. The Express are a little indecisive right now, it seems like, they're, you know, the passes are a little bit behind. They're not quite cut, hitting guys right in the opening like they need to. They're gonna need a way to speed things up a little bit. There's a sideline warning, a little too close with Stoudmeyer. He got a hand on it, but there was a reason. He was, well, maybe over the line. He gets a warning for it. They get the ball in without incident, this time to Elliott. Two to shoot. That one catches some iron, and McGlade with the rebound. Ahead to Walker as the ball is tipped out of bounds. Actually, that was Coleman on the drive. Probably should have went ahead and shot that one. Yeah, it looked like he was a little bit worried about maybe get, drawing some contact or getting it blocked going underneath, try to get it outside, and unfortunately got it swatted outside anyway. Nice block there, and it went right back off of McGlade. He couldn't do too much with it. By the, he was falling backwards. And the ball goes back over to the express. On the right side, Ballard. He's been a little quiet so far. There's an open three. Nope. Tipped out in front. Trying to tip it to himself was Coleman. But alertly picked back up by Elliott and an easy hoop underneath.
goes to Montague. Nice job of handling the ball that time by Elliott. A couple of different times people got their hands on it, tipped it away. He stayed with it, controlled his dribble. Found Montague underneath for the, for the easy layup. McGlade has it. This is Walker from deep. Doesn't go. Three red shirts around that one for the Express. Johnny Elliott came down with it, and you know, even as even as the point guard, he is this team's leading rebounder, pulling down eight rebounds a game. Out in front, Elliott. Good ball fake, got his man in the air, but missed the open shot. And Walker rebounds it for the swarm. Well, a lot of contact there for Stoudemeyer. He couldn't get it to the basket. Both teams having trouble scoring lately. There's a drive and a foul. And Rogers is going to pick up that personal. No fear by Ballard that time, even though going in the lane. Three on one. Took it in strong, trying to get the basket and drew the contact. Cordell Ballard down the line. A couple of shots here for... Ballard, 6'4", 200-pounder. As we mentioned, 26 points a game with a season high of 33 in the early going. Also averages about three points and about five assists a ball game. From the University of South Carolina, Aiken. Missed the free throw, though. Both of them, in fact, and the swarm come the other way. McGlade. Off to McLean and right to the hoop. James McLean with the basket. Took it right down the lane. Nothing the Express could do but watch him take it all the way in. That's the first hoop of the entire quarter for the Swarm. Extra step on the move by Taylor Bunton. Goes back to the Swarm. So I'm trying to pick up the tempo now, hurry, hurrying up, trying to see if they couldn't catch the express leap and almost did there, but I think it caught some of the Swarm players off guard too. McLean in the corner. With the James Harden beard, not quite as long, but a foul out in front Taylor again. Bunton, Taylor, Bunton. Taylor Bunton picks it up, number two on him. Second of the quarter on the Express. 27-26. Lima over Champagne at the moment. A lot of lead changes in this one. Right to the basket. Coleman gets bumped out of bounds and still made the shot high off the board. It was a great move going in on the inside. And he had he had good position on Montague, got him turned sideways. Not much else he could do but try to get his body into him and see if he could disrupt that shot. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to. And, did a great job of making it go in, even though he was falling out of bounds. Nice chance to convert on the end one. Coleman well short with the free throw, though. Cross spears the rebound for the Express. Champagne with a one-point advantage. Another deep three. That one's off the mark. Out of the hands of Ballard. McGlade runs it up the right side. Coleman. Now McLean. Coleman takes it to the hoop. Hangs in the air, but missed the bunny. A little shorty. And here comes the Express. Ed Jenkins into the ball game for Lima. And a foul called on Champagne. It's going to be on McLean. Ballard's back at the line looking to try to put two in. This time he missed his last two free throws. And early in the early in the season, in the first couple of games, free throws really were a problem area for the Express. And I believe it was something they worked on a lot. And in the last game, they uh, they were very successful. I believe they only missed one the entire game. And Hopefully early going with the few misses that Ballard had early wasn't a sign of them going backwards with the free throw. So far he made this first one and we'll see what he finishes up here. Six so far for Ballard. Got them both this time. 
He's got seven now, and the Express with a 29-28 lead. Eight lead changes now in this first 15 minutes of the ball game. McGlade goes to work for the Swarm. McLean gets it. This is Stoudmar on the left wing. He says, why not? Let's shoot it. And it's a two outside the college line, but not close to the NBA line. 30-29, the Swarm with the lead. And a near steal there. Great pass in, but missed. Right back into the hands of Meyer and his first basket oh, of the second quarter. Gives the seesaw battle back to the Swarm. Or, I'm sorry, to the Express. It's the pass to nowhere, but luckily the defense wasn't in the vicinity as well. There's that Rogers drive, his first basket since scoring 10 in the first quarter. I think everybody on the Express has had a chance to try to guard him and none of them have had, had a lot of success here so far. Helton with the hoop there, 33-32. Lead back to the Express. McGlade looking for a foul. Fell down, nothing happening with the whistles. McGlade's done a good job of running the running the offense so far for the Swarm. And, you know, he, he's a quick guy. He's small. He can get in and get a lot of good passes. But here the last couple of times, he's almost gotten a little bit too fast, gotten a little bit ahead of himself and almost threw the ball away. And then that time did throw the ball away. He needs to slow down a little bit, make sure he finds his players and know where they're going. And they know where he's going. They got to get on the same page. How many times have you seen a player that didn't get a foul call that he wanted down here get a little upset about it on this end and pick up one just to say, hey, let's see if you blow a whistle on me. And he did. But the shot is missed inside by Meyer. And a shot for the swarm here as McGlade takes it down the lane. Too hard off the back iron. Quickly the other way, Meyer in some traffic. He got that up with the left hand though. It's a great, great job that time by Meyer running the floor. That time he hung up just a little bit longer to try to get that shot off so it wouldn't get swatted back at him, and that time he managed to make it fall. Bounce pass into Mills. Good footwork there and scores his second basket of the night. Nice job by McGlade that time, threading the needle, getting it to his big man inside, was able to lay it up. Mills averaging all of .7 points a game. He's got four in this game. There's Meyer, almost lost it in the corner. Now Jenkins, and the scoop shot is good for Helton. Beautiful up and under that time by Helton, who's starting to warm up now. 37-34, the Express over the Swarm. Five minutes to play here, second quarter. Lobbed in to Mills, has an open shot. He had an open lane, but he used the board nicely. And Mills with a half a dozen now. 37-36. Again, Lima with the lead. Jenkins, pull-up shot there, got it. Jenkins. Good move by Jenkins that time, moving around, finding himself an open spot about 15 feet from the basket, was able to make it fall. His first basket, averaging just four points a game so far on the year. This is game number four for the Express and the Swarm, the shot missed on the express end, McGlade with a near steal. Gets it to Atkinson, shot miss from outside. And McLean's gonna run it the other way. Coleman with a spin fallback shot, no good. Both teams are kind of in a hurry up mode right now. They need to slow it down. They're not getting very good looks at the basket and forcing some things up. And a couple of these shots have been pretty ugly. They need to slow it down a little bit, try to reset, see if they can't get some better looks. Meyer with it. Jenkins playing a little two-man game on the left side. Spins his way through the lane and scores again. Kyle Meyer. Meyer has 14 points now, and they all come on the inside. A lot of those quick feet, then right able to run the floor, get to the basket. He's doing a great job inside on the swarm. And that's the biggest lead of the night for either team as McGlade oh, 
blows right through the defense, or he where was the defense is a better question. Yeah, he looked like he might have been getting a little frustrated there a couple of possessions ago. That time was able to get around and get back to the basket, do back to what he does best. Timeout called by Coach Mark Anderson of the Express. 41-38 game in favor of the Express. We mentioned that the schedule is full for the rest of the weekend, including your schedule, Nate. You've got a couple of games tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be over at the U.S. Coliseum over in Bloomington tomorrow afternoon. The Express have a game at noon, and then going off at 3.05 tomorrow is going to be the Swarm and the uh, River Sharks over there. So we got a doubleheader over there. It should be a great afternoon of basketball. River Sharks at 2-0 and out of St. Louis. A couple of come-from-behind wins, and they've got quite a player in Justin Bocott. Yes, he is a very, very impressive player. I was able to see him in the opening game this year. and that, He knows how to move without the ball. He's a great scorer. He's doing a great job for the River Sharks. River Sharks have a ton of talent. They added some players this year. Um, they, they were having a little bit of what it looked like maybe be some of those chemistry issues that you may have when you add players to a team and you're trying to find your way throughout the season. But as the season going, has been going on, Bocott's been leading them. They got a couple other guys who really are, know how to score. They're big, they're strong, they're athletic. They're a very, very tough team. Team, and they should be very fun to watch as we go forward in the league play this year. MVP last year leading the league in scoring this year is Justin Bocott, so that'll be a handful for Champagne tomorrow right here on MPBA.tv as we get ready to finish up the first half here, third 326, I should say, for the first half, and the Express with a three-point lead and the basketball. Rodgers is having a seat now here towards the end of the second quarter, trying to get a breather. A lot of these Swarm players have played a lot of minutes here early going, so I think they're trying to see if they can't get a couple of breaks, get some more players in here, see if they can't get some production from some other people. Meyer with another offensive rebound on the missed shot. The leaner there missed by Taylor Button. And a fresh 24 seconds. Shot missed from outside again. This time, McLean can clear it out of there for the Swarm. Three points down for Champagne. Here's McLean with a shot at the basket. Can't get it to go. That might have been altered a bit by the defender there. Scoop shot missed underneath. Helton a little frustrated with that one. Now McLean for the Swarm. Jordan Walker back into the ball game as well for Champaign. Little pick and roll action. Mills with a jumper, bounces twice off the rim and won't go. Both these teams are continuing to struggle here on the offensive side of the ball, having a hard time. And it's been a little bit of the defense, but a little bit of uh, not being able to quite have their legs underneath them. They've been getting some bad shots, forcing some things up. And a defensive three-second call on the Swarm. Jordan Walker called for that. Of course, that means a technical free throw coming up for Lima. I think the lines on the floor got him a little confused that time. He was up a little <laughs> bit far trying to shoot from the red line. <laughs> That's the volleyball line here <laughs> with the story. Team, the national champions, in fact, 2015 at the junior college level. It's that free throw was good by Helton. And it's a 42-38 ball game. Lima over Champagne with 2.03 to play. We'll take a timeout as well on MPBA.tv.
Back in Champaign, Illinois, 2.03 to go in the first half. A seesaw battle between Lima and Champaign. Right now in favor of the Express over the Swarm, 42-38. As Jenkins controls. In some traffic and a nice move to the hoop there. Devon Taylor Bunton. By Devon Taylor Bunton, his first basket of the night. Nice job of the Express that time. They came out with a little bit more energy out of the timeout and Bunton was able to get to the lane and get to the bucket. And that is the first basket for him tonight. Miss from the outside again. The Swarm not shooting that well here in the first half. That ball intended for Meyer tipped away and then they just give it right back. Three on one, look out. Easy bucket for Taylor Button. Back-to-back -back buckets now for Bunton, trying to see if he can't get going a little bit before halftime. Shake and bake for Walker. He's looking for a foul, doesn't get it. And again, they're going for the home run and find a man wide open underneath. Helton with the basket. That started down on the defensive end. Jenkins was getting, got his hands in there, was able to poke the ball away. Express did a great job of running the floor that time. Looked like it might get poked away out of bounds, but they maintained possession. Was able to find Helton underneath for the easy bucket. 7-0 run here for Lima. Down to 45 seconds to go and a blocking call. Mark Anderson not in exact agreement with that call. I think not just Mark Anderson, it looked like maybe every other single person on the bench there for Wearing the Express yep. <laughs> that disagreed with that call, but the ref saw the feet move and didn't think he had his position, and, and now he's going to the line for the, trying to shoot the free throws. Coleman goes to the line here, a 67 percenter on the year, and missed that one badly, well short. Express has gone on a little bit of a run here to towards the end of the second quarter to close out the half. And Swarm are going to want to try to answer, see if they, they can't force the Express into a two-for-one here, see if they can't get some points before they close out the half. And a travel before all that contact underneath the basket. Helton tried to get a little bit too fancy that time, trying to go behind the back, doing all sorts of different things, trying to get to the bucket before maybe passed it off and took about two or three extra steps there. So again... A fresh 24 and about a 10 second difference between the shot clock and game clock to end this first half. Coleman averaging 19 a game, just four. Now Walker to the hoop. Nope, but a late whistle and a foul called. And two shots coming for Walker. Meyer picks up the personal. That's five on the Express for the quarter. First on Meyer, though. And Walker steps to the line. 79% on the season. The short season at this point. Just three games under each of these teams' belt. Makes the first. Looked pretty good there. 48-40. Yeah. Nice redemption that time from the Swarm. Last time at the free throw line, unfortunately missed both of them. Trying to put a little pressure now, see if they can't get a turnover. And they did. Stepping out of bounds on the far side. Nice job that time by the Swarm. The Express wasn't ready for that. As soon as they crossed that half court line, they jumped all over them and it led to the turnover. Now yeah. Hart throws it away. They had plenty of time, actually, to run that ball down the court a little bit. And it got, wasn't quite aware of the clock that time was Helton and thought he had, only had enough time to throw it up for one last heave. Unfortunately, he could probably take in about three or four dribbles, gotten it pretty close before he took that. Point two, I think the rest probably talking about whether enough, there's enough time for the Swarm to even get a shot off. Of course, there's no replay to look at, so... They will they're gonna go add, with exactly what the timer has. They're going to well, they, add some they, time they there. Point nine on. I, I take that back. So there is an opportunity maybe for one dribble and a shot here. And it's Walker. He won't try either. That is your first half. 48-40.
the Express over the Swarm with a late run in the second quarter as they take the halftime lead over the homestanding Swarm. We'll take a break, get some stats to you, and more coming up next at half on the MPBA.TV. Look at dude right here in them tight old slacks. Oh, look at that handline man, it's way pushed back. And that tie's <laughs> mad ugly, it's a horrible pick. Somebody get me some pills, this dude is making me sick. True that, true that, all right. Okay, okay. Hold on to my clean shirts and please don't get them dirty because I know you're going to drool when you hear me getting wordy because I'm a walking, talking, smacking human encyclopedia. You thought I'd stop there, but now I'm getting greedier. I'm a promotion in motion and by now you got the notion that I got strategic plans coming out my ears. My key points and decks will bring y'all to tears. Turning pennies into dimes, I shift paradigms. But how you going to let a marketing rep rip your rep and slip a depth rhyme schemes and that your mind only dreams in? I bet you all wonder why my rhyme is so tight. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Thanks. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. Back in Champaign, Illinois, I'm Scott Medlin alongside Nate Garlock at halftime between the Swarm of Champaign, the Express from Lima, Ohio, and the lead belonging to the visitors so far, Nate, 48 to 40, as they finished up that uh, second quarter on a 7-2 run. Eight points is the biggest margin we've seen in the first half. Yeah, it's been a little bit difficult on both for both teams on the offensive side of the ball. and. They've definitely stepped up the defense, and they've also it's been a little bit of the offense is shutting themselves down, rushing some things, throwing the ball away, some turnovers. Uh, for the Express, the biggest thing they did in that second quarter was they figured out a way to slow down Michael Rogers, which so far nobody in the league's been able to do. He had 10 points in that first quarter, but only two in the second quarter, and I think that's really been the difference in the game so far. Absolutely correct. Uh, he was dominant in the first quarter, even though the Swarm only led by one after one. But uh, only, like, like you said, that single basket and uh, not a lot of scoring really by the Swarm from anybody else to pick up that slack. Uh, they kind of spread it out. Coleman with a basket, uh, one for McGlade, one for Jordan, actually a free throw, uh, a couple of free throws. And then uh, Mills did get a couple of baskets off the bench in that second quarter. McLean also with a hoop, but it's uh, the Swarm with just 40 points at halftime. As I said, that first game I saw against Windy City, they had 70 at halftime. Quite a difference in offense at this point. Yep, it definitely seems like as Michael Rogers go, the swarm goes. And, you know, they, they average over 100 points a game, and they've had, they, you know, they've scored 130, 120 plus points, except for their last game, which they were just under 100. But it seems when he struggles, the rest of the team struggles. They have other players who, who have high averages. Um, you know, we talked about Coleman. You know, he's averaging 19 points a game. McGlade's over 15 points a game. Uh, you know, Walker has 18 points a game. 
but these guys seem to be struggling a little bit without getting into a rhythm with Rodgers. But, you know, he does such a good job of moving without the ball and cutting to the basket. And, and with the Express being able to shut him down so far, it seems like the rest of the team's just been kind of out of rhythm as well. Yeah, a little out of sync offensively, certainly for the Swarm. Again at halftime, 48-40, Lima over Champaign. We hope to get some stats pushed to us shortly. We'll give you some scoring uh, as well when we get back to Parkland College in Champaign, Illinois on mpba.tv. again mixing sauces hot barbecue to parmesan garlic and back again you're not on the same page of the playbook are you it's time to speak up next time lover boy goes to mix set him straight we're gonna stop mixing sauces now okay thank you grab a seat the game is up both of the wild wings wings spear sport Back in Champaign at half, where Lima is leading Champaign 48 to 40. Scott Medlin, Nate Garlock with you as we check the scoring for the first half for Champaign. Four points for Adrian Coleman, three for Booker Stoudmeyer. He had just uh, the lone three pointer back in the first quarter. Seven for Oliver McGlade. He also had a three in the first half. Jordan Walker with three points, including two free throws there. Silas Mills had six off the bench. McLean, James McLean with two. And to lead the way again was the top scorer for the Swarm all season so far. And second in the league, Michael Rogers. But as Nate pointed out, 10 of his 12 came in the first quarter for the Swarm. On the Lima side, Two double figure scores plus five other contributors, it looks like. Taylor Bunton with four in the first half. We had seven for Cordero Ballard, 
two for Montague, six for Aaron Cross, two for Ed Jenkins, then 11 for James Hilton in the first half. He came in averaging 24 a game, so he's right on that number. And Kyle Meyer leads all scorers with 14 first half points. Eight in the first quarter, second in the second, or six in the second quarter, rather. Uh, he's nearing his 18 point average here in the first half. Yeah, the Swarm didn't have much of an answer for him on the inside. You know, he's not one of those guys that's going to go out and you're not going to see him shooting the threes or being too far away from the basket. He does most of his work inside. Great footwork, trying to get up and unders, runs the floor very well to finish up layups for his team. And that's what he had a lot of success in so far in this first half. Again, after one 24 23 Swarm. Here at the half, it's 48-40, Lima, the Express over the Swarm. As we'll come back and get the second half to you shortly, you're watching us on mpba.tv. There he goes again, mixing sauces. Hot barbecue to Parmesan garlic and back again. You're not on the same page of the playbook, are you? It's time to speak up. Next time lover boy goes to mix, set him straight. We're going to stop mixing sauces now, OK? Thank you. Grab a seat. The game is up. Buffalo the Wild Wings, Wings, Spear, Sport. Dude, right here in them tight old slacks. Oh, look at that handline, man. It's way pushed back. And that tie's <laughs> mad ugly. It's a horrible pick. Somebody get me some pills. This dude is making me sick. True that, true that. All right. Okay, okay. Hold on to my clean shirts and please don't get them dirty because I know you're going to drool when you hear me getting wordy. Because I'm a walking, talking, smacking human encyclopedia. You thought I'd stop there, but now I'm getting greedier. I'm a promotion in motion and by now you got the notion that I got strategic plans coming out my ears. My key points and decks will bring y'all to tears. Turning pennies into dimes, I shift paradigms. But how you going to let a marketing rep rip your rep and slip a depth rhyme schemes and that your mind only dreams in? I bet you all wonder why my rhyme is so tight. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Thanks. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express.
No more, it's none of my business. No more, he didn't mean it. No more, not my problem. No more, she was flirting with him. No more, she was asking for it. No more, boys will be boys. No more, I'll say something next time. No more bystanding. No more ignorance. No more excuses. No more. Back in Champaign, Illinois, where the Express, visiting from Lima, Ohio, have the lead, 48 to 40 over the Champaign Swarm. Anything jump off that stat sheet at you in the first half there, Nate? I see neither team has done much beyond the three-point arc, which is, in this league, a little unusual. You usually get some scoring from the three-pointer area. And it, well, it's definitely more of a surprise for the Swarm than it is for the Express. They, both teams like to shoot the three, but the Swarm much more proficient in it. Uh, they have more guys that are willing to shoot that three ball than the Express are. So it's been a little bit of a shock that there hasn't been more threes by the Swarm, which is most one of the reasons why they've struggled on the offensive end so much so far. And they only have 40 points at this point in the game. Another thing that really jumps out at me is going into this game, the, the Express 14 turnovers a game, which isn't – you know they're they're towards the upper part of the league, but the number one player for that is surprisingly Cody Ballard. He he aver he averages almost five turnovers a game. He leads the league in turnovers with 14 total, and so far he's done a really good job of protecting the ball and not giving the ball away. And rebounds, with all of those misses by the uh, Swarm, is 24 to 15 in favor of Lima. Uh, let's see, 45 percent. Uh, from the field on 18 of 40 shots for uh, the Swarm and 46% for uh, Lima. But uh, neither team making threes, as we said, two of 11 for the Swarm, one of 11 for Lima. Yeah, and you know, on the, you're talking about the rebounds as well. And now, you know, the Expresses are winning that battle, which also means they're, they're winning the offensive rebounding battle as well four to one over the swarm, which means they're getting more second chances, they're getting an opportunity to put the ball up. And with a game that's only an eight point lead difference right now, that could be really a big key stat in the game if the swarm aren't able to get more second chance tries. Again at halftime, 48 to 40, the Express with the lead. I did miss one basket in the first half. Stoudemire actually has five, five points for the swarm, not three. Otherwise, everything totaled up pretty well, and that 7-2 run at the end of the second quarter is the difference in this ball game, which had 12 lead changes and a couple of ties as well at 2 and at 15 here in the first half. It looks like I might have been looking at the wrong stat as well. You know, I just uh, was giving Ballard credit for holding on to the ball with no turnovers. But now that I, I relook at my sheet, I'm looking in the right column, and he has two. So he's still, you know, he's still a little bit off of his pace. But as a team, you know, they're already up to eight turnovers. It just looks like the Swarm haven't really had much success creating points off of those turnovers. Um, you know, they're already above their, uh, the Express are already above their average or on pace to be above their average for the game if they can't clean it up a little bit. And it could lead to the Swarm being able to come back into this game if the Express keep turning the ball over at that rate. It'll be Express ball to start our second half. Again, the Express in the traveling red uniforms tonight. Swarm in the home whites. And it looks like pretty much the same starters in the first half, starting the second half. As Johnny Elliott runs the point for the Express. Atkinson handles it on the right side. It's a return pass, and there's that Meyer again, but he got it knocked away that time. They're going to continue to what's been successful for him so far, and that's been Meyer on the inside. That time the Swarm did a good job, though, getting their hands on the ball and not allowing them to get to the basket. Just five to shoot here for the Express, and they get an easy shot at it and missed it. Express without numbers there. It looked like a walk. They didn't call it. 
Uh, looks and like Helton might be injured, having to walk off the floor. So right now, Spresser got to play one down. And Helton still hurt on the other end of the floor. Despite that, they get some free throws on the other end on a four on five situation. Yeah, Ballard took the ball up strong and was trying to get to the rim to see if he couldn't score some points. And looks like Helton's gonna bounce back and be okay. Are they gonna le let him stay in the game as the trainer came over? Well, actually, yeah, the swarm trainer came over. And the coach as well, but they are gonna let him stay out there on the floor. And Ballard misses the front end of two here to start the quarter. Ballard was two of four in the first half in free throws, and with that, still shooting 50%. 49-40 is he Kansas second one. If I'm the Swarm, I'm going to want to try to find a way to get Rodgers involved early. There's McGlade gliding to the basket. He's done that a couple of times tonight. Hey, he's got nine. Yeah, he's been able to have a great first step and be able to get to the lane, and all the Express can do is watch him go to the bucket. Ballard cut off that time as he dribbled to the top of the circle. Helton. Return pass from Meyer and the lefty hook shot is good. Helton wanted to come down that time and show him that his eye was fine and no lingering effects of that poke he took a couple of possessions ago. McGlade going to work again, gives it up this time. Coleman, there's the shot they're looking for and Rogers gets the basket. That's important for the Swarm. They need to get Rogers involved early, try to get him to the bucket, see if he can't do some damage inside. Cuts the lead to seven, ten and a half to go here, third quarter. Express from Lima, Ohio. They turn it over. Quick pass down to Walker. Still trying to pick it up, and then he finally gets the handle and lays it in. That's what we were talking about right before the beginning of this second half was the turnovers, and if the Express weren't able to cut those down, how it might lead to the Swarm coming back. And that time, Ballard lost the handle, turned the ball over, and Swarm were able to get an easy two points going the other way. Coaches call that a pick six, even though that's a football term. It took a while for Walker to turn it into two points, and there's another defensive three seconds. Called on, I believe, Walker again. And Helton will go to the line. 92% so far in this young season, and the free throw is good. Looks like he's even still having a little bit of uh, difficulty with his eye there, keeps wiping it, keeps checking it. Hopefully it's not something that lingers because they're going to need Helton to stay hot if they're going to want to hold on to this game. 52-46 now, the Express with the lead and the ball. Passing up a shot and now the three ball is no good from the corner, missed by Helton. McGlade controlling for the Swarm. Pull up jumper by McGlade, doesn't go. Rogers touched it last. It'll be Express Basketball. Nine thirty-nine and counting in this third quarter. Helton along the baseline. Wild shot is no good, but it was tipped right into the hands of one of the Express players. Now Walker is tied up along the baseline. It'll be Swarm basketball alternating possession. Nice Are job, they, that. Do they do that? Do they actually jump it up? I'm sorry, that's an NBA rule. I'm sorry, i yep. so used to having the arrow. In fact, there's no arrow over there. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. makes a lot of sense. It's gonna be a little difficult for Elliott. He's giving away a lot of size here on this jump ball. And Walker does easily win the tap. It was a nice job by Elliott that time, though, on the offensive side. He stuck with it. He stayed active, kept going after it. Unfortunately, the Express lost the, lost the possession that time, but he showed a lot of energy trying to keep that ball. Good baseline maneuver by Coleman. And he's got a basket in each quarter, and the lead is down to four. Loose ball and a foul called or out of bounds, one of the two. They're gonna say out of bounds and the Express will keep it, luckily that time. 
A lot of pressure put on that possession. Now they lob it into Meyer. He goes to work in the paint. Missed the shot, looking for a foul, and a late whistle there as Walker got the rebound. Let's see what they call. Loose ball foul on Champagne. And they did call it on Walker. Two on him, two on the team for the quarter. A little bit aggressive there, trying to get the rebound for his team, and that time it led to the foul and the Express keeping the ball for a new possession. Now again, they put on a double team trap. Ball's on the floor and we'll jump it again. Jump ball. And Ballard's a smarter player than that. You know, he, he knows, he's got good vision and he knows where his teammates are gonna be. And that time, it seems like he got a little bit lazy on the pass and instead of trying to find a way around the arms, tried to pass it right through, the Swarm were able to keep their hands on it to almost cause a turnover leading to this jump ball. We need the Libman man. Out with the, there's nobody manning the mop. <laughs> They're also talking about resetting the shot clock here. It has been reset. The question is, yeah, they're gonna knock a second off of it. So it will be a 23 second possession for someone after this jump ball at the express foul line. Ballard at 6-4. Going against Stoudmeyer at six foot. I wish the college game would go back to that. Somebody was moving on the circle. Looks like they called Cut Helton that time. Swarm will get it. I do wish the college game would go back to a jump ball. Yeah, I, I do too. I like it a lot better. It's, you know, it's one of those things that instead of being an automatic change of possession, you know, you, you go back, it's a little bit more competitive side to it. Good look by Walker Stoudmeyer on the receiving end, and it's a two-point game. Looks like Johnny Ellie got a little crossed up that time. Looked like he was trying to pass it, couldn't quite stop his feet, and that time ended up just having to drop it to not get called for the travel, but it still led to a turnover. Walker with a floater in the lane won't go. Atkinson clears the board for the Express. Now a three ball underway, and that one nestles in for Helton. That was a big basket for the Express. They were off to a little bit of a slow start so far here in the second half. The Swarm managed to close that gap and pull within two, and that was a big three-pointer there. To the hoop, McGlay doesn't get it. Three on two the other way. Meyer missed the in close shot and a foul on the rebound. You can see Walker pushed well away from the hoop. They're gonna get Ballard on at that time. They were trying to get some get some position underneath, see if he couldn't get that rebound. And not sure if Meyer just lost his footing or didn't think he had the position, but instead of going hard to the basket like he normally does that time, he tried to pull up and see if he couldn't get underneath. And it, Caught everybody off guard, and he wasn't able to get it under, into the basket. Basketball, a game of angles. He didn't have the right angle. Not there. at all. And again, a chance to cut into the lead for the Swarm here. And McGlade with five seconds to shoot. Rogers will take it in, missed it. Cleared out of there by Atkinson again. It's a return pass of good luck there. Oh boy, Johnny Elliott with the assist. That was a great pass that time. That was his point guard rewarding the big man for running the floor. He's not normally the guy you're gonna see taking the ball up the court for the express, but the time he did to clear it out and Elliott rewarded him by getting it to him underneath. And McGlade picking up the foul and a technical foul as well. Called on McGlade as he slammed the ball down after picking up the offensive foul. Delay of, delay of game is the official call on it and they're gonna get some free throws here. Helton will go to the line again, as we said, 92% on the year. And as usual, the broadcaster's jinx. <laughs> yeah. 
a little bit of frustration coming out on McGlade. He's last couple of possessions, you can see it a couple of possessions ago, he was looking for the foul and he's been talking with the refs, trying to find out why when he gets contact, it's not getting called. I think that time it got to him again. And it wasn't one of those things he did intentionally or mean spirited. I think just the frustration coming out led to that technical. There is a nice drive to the hoop by Atkinson. His first basket of the night and the lead balloons back to nine. It was eight at halftime for the visiting Lima Express. Back-to-back -back possession that time that Atkinson was able to get to the basket and finish it at the rim. McGlade can't buy one from outside. Elliott with the rebound. Three ball on the other end won't go. Tip dunk attempt by one of the smallest guys on the floor. Elliott up on that rim. Let's see what they called. Is that basket interference? I think that's what they're going to end up yeah. calling. And Mark Anderson wasn't real happy with that call. He thought maybe they were getting his player for catching the ball while he was still in the air, which took some uh, took some athletic prowess there. But that time it was the uh, basket interference and led to the Swarm coming back the other way. Swarm had cut it down to two. It's now nine with 5.50 to go as McGlade down the lane, turns it over. Up, oh, who touched it last? It goes back to the Swarm. And a timeout call with 5.49 to go here in the third quarter. Express lead it by nine over the homestanding swarm, 59-50 on mpba.tv. Dude right here in them tight old slacks. Oh, look at that handline, man. It's way pushed back. And that tie is mad ugly. It's a horrible pick. Somebody get me some pills. This dude is making me sick. True that, true that. All right. Okay, okay. Hold on to my clean shirts and please don't get them dirty because I know you're going to drool when you hear me getting wordy. Because I'm a walking, talking, smacking human encyclopedia. You thought I'd stop there, but now I'm getting greedier. I'm a promotion in motion and by now you got the notion that I got strategic plans coming out my ears. My key points and decks will bring y'all to tears. Turning pennies into dimes, I shift paradigms. But how you going to let a marketing rep rip your rep and slip a depth rhyme schemes and let your mind only dreams in? I bet you all wonder why my rhyme is so tight. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Thanks. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. Back at Champaign, Illinois, Scott Medlin, Nate Garlock, third quarter action in the MPBA and the Swarm from Champaign trailing Lima 59-50. Swarm cut it to two. But a 7-0 run by Lima has it back to nine points as the third quarter comes to near the end. Near steal out in front. Again, a lot of double team pressure. Finding somebody open up too quick, out of bounds. Great defensive pressure right there by the Swarm coming over for the double teams in the traps, trying to cause a turnover. That time it got the Express moving too quick and they threw it out of bounds. Speeding, speeding up the game a little bit there. Maybe that's to the Swarm advantage. We'll see if they continue the defense. John Spasia calling that one from the bench as McGlade handles it for the Swarm. On the drive is Coleman. He'll get the basket and a foul. That time going strong into the basket, trying to make something happen. Was able to draw the contact and going for the and one now. Trying to get three points the old fashioned way. Cross picks up the personal as he has returned to the express lineup. And that's three on Cross. He hasn't played a whole lot. But he's also pitched in six points in that first half. Coleman to the free throw line. And that one rolls in. 
nine for Adrian Coleman. And a six point lead for the Express. Another good pass underneath, but not quite ready for it. Was Aaron Cross. Three point basket, Aaron Cross. And now Cross with nine points in the ball game. Almost lost it underneath, was able to get it back outside to his teammates, and as he did, he set up on that baseline and was able to get a three-pointer. And Neville, fresh off of the champagne bench, has his first basket. He'll get a three-point opportunity as well. Cross picks up number four. Coming out of that timeout, the Swarmer done a nice job of attacking the rim and trying to get, see if they couldn't draw some contact. And so far, it's been successful and set him to the line two times in a row now. Neville can't make the free throw though. Scramble for the rebound controlled by Kyle Meyer for the Express. Yeah. 62-55, Lima over Champagne. Cutter to the basket. And I think they're in the lane too long, yeah. Three seconds is the call. Probably should have shot that ball. Again, it's the Swarm's pressure that's really led to the Express having to speed things up a little bit, being a little bit unprepared and not quite ready for passes and shots. And they're doing a really good job, the Swarm is, of stepping up the defensive pressure. And a foul coming down the floor. I'm not sure what they're going to call here, but Walker and Helton getting a little tangled up as the ball was coming across the 10 second line. Things are getting a little bit heated there. Helton's been a little frustrated underneath, did a little bit talking between him and Walker each time down the floor. That time it led to an elbow and they, both players need to, be, need to be careful, don't want to lead to a technical. Swarm can't take advantage of it though. A turnover right back into the hands of the Express. Simple inbounds play there, didn't work at all. Another cutter to the hoop. Shot is short by Elliott, but he's going to get free throws out of it. Nice job of moving without the ball that time. You got the ball to Kyle Meyer, who's oh, immediately oh, double teamed to keep him from moving to the rim. And Elliott cuts the basket. Meyer found him and thought he was going to try to get the easy layup. Instead, he was fouled. Now he gets a chance to go for two at the free throw line. Elliott, just six foot, plays a lot bigger than that, though. Uh, yes, he does. You know, like I was mentioning in the first half, he's actually the team's leading rebounder. He averages eight rebounds a game, and for a guard at only six foot, that's a pretty remarkable stat. Misses the first of two. Averaging 11 points a game, but hasn't scored yet tonight. And still hasn't. Walker rebounds quickly. Neville pull up jumper right side, and a banker is in there. That's a shot right there from somebody who knows his spot on the floor. He didn't bother trying to go in for the layup or draw the contact. He felt confident with that 10-footer there and was able to bank it in. 62-57 now back to a five-point game. Just like that, though, a three from Helton. His second of the quarter, he's got 20. Each time in this second, second half when the Express have needed a big basket, it's been Helton to step up and drain those confident three-pointers. McGlade's shot in the air is nothing but net. And they're going to need to get him going. He's not a very high percentage sh shooter from the floor, but he's a 50% three-point shooter, and so he needs to step out and see if he can't try to find his range to try to get some bucket buckets for his team. 11 for McGlade as Meyer picks up the loose ball and gets battered from behind. Walker's going to pick up that foul. The foul was on Jordan Walker, his third. I think Meyer knew plenty well that he was going to draw some contact going to the rim, but that didn't stop him. Still went up strong and is able to get to the free throw line. Meyer with 14 first half points has yet to score here in the third with 314 to play. And a funny looking free throw is no good. Yeah, he has a little bit of an awkward shot at times. It's almost like he's pushing the ball, but it's, it's the shot that he actually works on. And I don't, you know, I don't know if it's because he plays in the middle a lot and he's trying to see if he can't get that touch to get over guys, but you see him working on it a lot where it's just kind of more of a push than a, the typical shot where you see coming off the fingertips. That one rattles out as well. 
So no harm on the foul. And a six point lead still on the board for the Express and a foul away from the ball. On Lima. I think the Swarm might have caught a break on that one. They got Helton on the hold, but it looked like Rogers actually grabbed Helton and was trying to move him out of the way to try to get to the rim. So far, Rogers has been held scoreless in this third quarter, and it's going to be real important for the Swarm that he starts getting hot and trying to get some looks. He tries one from the outside, no good, and the ball last touched by Neville trying to scramble for a rebound. And a timeout called by Mark Anderson for Lima. Their lead still holds. It's at six. It was eight at halftime. 65-59 now with 2.54 to go in the third quarter on MPBA.TV. No more, it's none of my business. No more, he didn't mean it. No more, not my problem. No more, she was flirting with him. No more, she was asking for it. No more, boys will be boys. No more, I'll say something next time. No more bystanding. No more ignorance. No more excuses. No more. to play third quarter. Lima's been in control of this one, Nate, since they took the lead at 33 to 32 back in the second period. They have not trailed since. And they hold a six point lead right now. Yeah, the Swarm have done a good job though keeping the game close and they've struggled a lot on the offensive end and, and Rodgers had a hard time getting off and finding his shot and getting the points that they're accustomed to him getting but they have managed to keep it close and giving themselves a chance towards the end of here to the third quarter and going into the fourth quarter to, to get back in this game and possibly take a lead. Express basketball and a cheapy out in front called on McLean. That's only the second on McLean, four on the team for the quarter. 15 to shoot here for the Express. the inbound right in front of Mark Anderson. Ed Jenkins into the game and promptly gives the ball right back to the Swarm. Swarm were able to get a turnover that time. I'd like to see him get back to that pressure where they got the two man and they were getting the traps and they were really forcing the Express out of their game and, and trying to hurry things up and it was extremely successful for him. I'd like to see him get back to that and try to see if they can't cut into this lead some more. Great look there from McGlade to Rogers. 16 for Rogers, cuts it to four now at 65-61. Jenkins will try the outside jumper, that's a two for Ed Jenkins. It was a good answer for the Express that time coming down on the offensive end to answer Rogers' two-pointer on the other side of the floor. Rogers can't get it to fall on this end. See if they try to attack. And a foul called before the pass got away. Which I think they I think they got him. He was uh, on the baseline there, it looked like, when he received that pass setting up for the three-pointer. Mark okay. Anderson was a little upset with that. Couldn't believe that his player would set up that far out. No foul at all there. So a chance to cut into the lead again. Here's Neville working his way in and scores. Neville's come in and gave the Swarm a nice spark here early going. He's got six points, I believe, here in the third quarter. 
He's done a nice job for him coming in and trying to get some much needed points. 67-63 now. As again, the defensive pressure picking up for the Swarm. Back out for an open three ball. That one's well off the mark. Missed by Cross and rebounded for the Swarm by McLean. The Express still struggling from the three-point line, and if the Swarm are going to keep the defensive pressure up that they are, the Express are going to need some of those to fall. Here's McLean, wide open Rodgers. Another basket for the second leading scorer in the MPBA. He's got 18, and the lead is back to a two-point ball game. And 40 seconds to play here in the quarter. Right side two ball by Jenkins won't go. Tipped out in front, reset on the shot clock, and now a turnover. Three on two, quickly down, it's Coleman with the basket. Great job by the Swarm that time, keeping the defensive pressure up, sticking with it, keeping their hands going. Now we're back to a brand new ball game, all tied up with 20 seconds left here in the third quarter. First time we've been tied since 15 all. And a shot at the last shot of the quarter, if they can hang on to it, that is. Corner jumper, nope. Rogers another rebound. And a scramble at midcourt for that high pass. No whistle, end of quarter. 67 all as we head for the fourth quarter. The Swarm and the Express will fight it out in the final 12 minutes as we return on mpba.tv. again mixing sauces hot barbecue to parmesan garlic and back again you're not on the same page of the playbook are you it's time to speak up next time lover boy goes to mix set him straight we're gonna stop mixing sauces now okay thank you grab a seat the game is up both of the wild wings swing spear sport Champaign, Illinois, 12 minutes to go. Fourth quarter about to begin. Can the Swarm from Champaign get their first MPBA victory? We'll find out. It's a new ball game, as Nate mentioned, 67 all to start the quarter. You know, in the pregame, we talked about some of the things that the Express have been struggling with, and the main thing has been closing out games. They've had leads in each of, each of their first three games, just like this game had, had a lead and have been unable to hold them so far. So now they've got to figure out if they can find an answer and try to take the lead back to see if they want a victory. Walker with 10 to shoot. Corner McGlade. Nope. And the rebound to Lima's Montague. Here's Meyer working on that baseline on Walker. Didn't get it to go, and a holding call from behind will be on Coleman. 
The ball's on to Adrian Coleman, his first. They got the look they wanted. Anytime you can get the ball in Myers' hands underneath the basket like that, that's the look that you want. Unfortunately, that time he wasn't able to get it to fall. The Express were lucky to keep the possession that time on the hole call. First minute of the fourth quarter, tied at 67, and a steal. Tipped away by Coleman, he'll lay it up, and a lead for Adrian Champagne. Coleman. Little extra show there at the end. Looked like Ballard just kind of put a hand on her shoulder there to see if he couldn't throw him off balance a little bit, and Coleman decided to fall down. 13th, now 14th lead change of the game. Ballard, that, Ballard scores. Ballard that time decided to go coast to coast, take it himself so he could finish it and drew his team even again. Tie ball game at 69. McGlade, deep three, rattles in. You knew eventually he was going to get some of those to fall. Like we said, he's a 50% three point shooter and he wasn't going to keep missing from outside. And the Express need to make sure they close out on him or he's going to keep making those. Swarm done a nice job of stepping up the pressure again back to the double teams and the traps, trying to see if they can't get some turnovers. And the Express are going to have to find a way to deal with that. Or, you know, uh, the way that the Swarm's been able to close this gap so far and retake this lead, if the Express can't figure out a way to get past those traps and double teams, it's only going to get worse for them. Myers, strong move, doesn't go. Right there, though, for the tap in. Montague, Montague with his second bucket. And that's what Mark Anderson likes so much about this young man is he's always right there around the rim. He's ready to clean things up on the board, whether it be second chances or, or whatever they need him to do. Foul called on Meyer, I believe, for the Express. The foul was on Fort Darrell Ballard. Is no, it was on Ballard. Four on him, first of the fourth quarter on uh, the, the Express, that is. Again, the low post into Rogers. Looked like a double dribble there. Mark Anderson, you could hear him across the gym saying double, but the basket's good for Mr. Rogers. Not the Mr. Rogers, but Mr. Rogers. 20 for him. Nice pass, easy basket for Montague. Good job that time by the Express spreading the ball out, making sure it, people touch it so they can get the best look that they could that time down the floor. They are able to draw within one. Here's Neville with a high arcing three is good. Neville continues to provide that spark the Swarm needs has come in and that's his ninth point of, the, of this second half. That's exactly what the Swarm needed with a couple other players struggling on the offensive end. Well, I was wondering why he didn't play more in the first half. He's quite the shooter as there's another three ball that's starting to heat it up from beyond the arc. That one for Devon Taylor Button. That was a big answer by the Express, especially when this game start when they've given up the lead. You know, look like the Swarm starting to step up their pressure, making a comeback, maybe trying to take some of the momentum. The Express were able to come down and put a three pointer up. Walker gets a nice feed and scores. And suddenly. Neither defense can stop anybody as Walker has seven for the game. And we got a timeout called with that loose ball. Timeout for the Express. They'll keep possession. They trail, though, by three with 8.40 to go on MPBA.TV.
back in Champaign, 840 to play, and the Swarm have come from behind, trailing by nine early on in this half. Now up three, 79-76. Shooting 50% through three quarters as we get the stats in. And the, re or the uh, turnovers, Nate, the big difference. There's another one, number 16 of the night, as Neville will lay it up, miss it, but right there, for the tip in is Coleman. Swarm's doing a really good job now on the defensive end and making sure that those turnovers are crossing the express on back on the offensive end of things. And we got eight minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter with Helton down. Ballard's really got to pick things up. Right now he's only shooting 20% for the game. And right on cue, he goes ahead and makes a two-pointer there. They're going to need him to get hot if they're going to want to make sure they stay in this game and find a way to retake the lead. Ballard with 12 now, 81-78. Swarm up just that three points. McGlade down low to Rogers, and he just bulls his way to the basket. They're going to call it on Rogers. Sometimes being that big can work against you, and that time that's what it did. He was he was just trying to get to the basket. And when you're that big, you take up that much space. You know, you lower that shoulder, and it's so easy to catch. And they're going to get you every time for it. Four on Rodgers, I believe they said, although it doesn't show on the scoreboard. 81-78, the score remains. Seven and a half to go here from Champaign. Jenkins missing the jumper. Easy call from behind. Rodgers had that rebound. Montague is going to pick up the personal. Bad foul of Montague that time. That, that was pretty easy to see that there was no way he was going to be able to get position on that ball, and he went up, and it was an easy call for the ref that time. McGlade came alive in that third quarter. Drive to the hoop. Coleman back out. Walker, a rare three, is an air ball. Rogers tried to get it back in play, but it'll be express basketball. I think we just saw why it's a rare three, as you said, from him. And that time it was a bad possession by the Swarm. You're trying to protect this lead, and you want to try to get better shots than that. Meyer did leave him, and he was wide open. But if that's not your shot, you want to try to work it around, see if you can get something better. You don't want to hurt your team right now with bad shots when you're protecting the three-point lead. Ballard going to work. Oh, look at something has to be called. I believe traveling would be the right call there. The officials confer whether that ball was tipped out of the hands of the player, and I guess they're going to say it was. A lot of discussion going around down there right now. Nobody's quite sure what happened. Some people thought it was an up and down. Some people thought it was a travel. Ballard was saying that it was tipped. Either way, it's going to be an express ball. With just six seconds to shoot it, Jenkins behind the back dribble. Whoa! Great move that time by Jenkins. Great ball control, great body control to get in the lane behind the back, get to the rim and finish. That was a huge basket for the Express. Only six seconds left on the shot clock. That could have been a big turnover. He turned something, nothing into something. Here's McGlade. I don't know if he had control of that one or not, but it banked in. Either way, it was a beautiful shot. Was able to get it in over everybody in the middle there and extend his team's lead by three. 83-80, the swarm, as Jenkins passes it in and a blocking call on the swarm will send the express to the foul line. In the person of Montague, I believe, will get the free throws. Stoudemire with his third. They haven't been in the line a bunch tonight, but they are struggling, only shooting 38% so far through the game. They're going to need these free throws if they get to the line to go down. They're going to want to get themselves back in this game and in a position to win. Montague gets the first one down. He's got seven for the game. Second one will not go. Rodgers with the rebound. Montague's given the Express some big minutes. He hasn't gotten a lot of them, but he's made the most of them when he's been in there. 83-81, the Swarm with the lead, down to six minutes to go. This is McGlade spinning through the lane, shot well short though. Somebody might have got a piece of that one as Montague spears the rebound. A little step through and basket 
is good by Bauer. That was a big play by the Express that time, attacking the basket, getting it to fall down. Now he's got a chance to convert the and one and give his team uh, regain the lead here. Stoudmire with his fourth foul, consecutive trips down, number three and now number four. Third on the team. And the free throw is missed again, but Meyer gets the rebound. He got hit and no call. Out of bounds, Swarm will have it. The Express aren't able to retake the lead and hold on to win this game. They're gonna look back at this game footage and kick themselves for these free throws. Our fifth tie of the game is at 83 all as the Swarm bring it to the front court. Lob it in for Rogers, not there. Great defense by Meyer that time, denying that entry pass. Here's Meyer, shot off the glass is good. That's what he's so good at, moving his feet, getting in position, getting to the right angle to get to the ref, get to the basket. His first basket of the second half gives the Express the lead back with five minutes to go. McGlade for a two, and it's good. McGlade looks like he could get that shot anytime he wants it. He has a really quick first step, and it usually leaves his defender trailing that time to set the screen. He used that quickness to his benefit and was able to get open for an easy two. Foul called on Stoudmeyer. He's got his third in a row. Well, That's his good. fifth. Team's fourth. Five to shoot. Pull up from the foul line, way off the mark, and that will be a shot clock violation on the Express. This Helton shot wasn't close. I think Helton lost the track a little bit of where the shot clock was and how much time he had, had to force something up, and that time didn't hit anything. McGlade will work it for the Swarm. 420 and counting for the ball game. Here's Coleman on the drive. Reverse will not go. Rebound cleared out of there by Hilton. It was a good idea by McLean that time, to, or I'm sorry, by Coleman that time to try to get inside and see if he couldn't get a basket. He was able to get by Montague, just wasn't able to finish at the rim. Hilton works the baseline, dumps it off. That's Meyer in the lane. Got a little contact, but made it anyway. 18 for him. Big, strong kid. Sometimes it's like he almost does better when he gets that contact. 87-85, the Express with a two-point lead. 3.30 to play. McGlade, a lot of dribbling, no shooting. Rogers to the lane, cradled it, lefty. Wow. Nice, pretty move by Rogers that time to get to the rim and pull this game even. Timeout on the floor, 87 all, or was it another it's technical? Another technical. I'm not quite sure who they got that time on it. The last game has been called on the swarm. Oh, the ball got tapped underneath after the made shot. James Hilton at the line. And Second normally, time. there's not a, it's not a big deal, but there's a lot of room underneath these baskets, and that's called delay of game, therefore. Second time the Swarm being called for that one, and that time the Express were able to get the technical to go down. And even though normally it's not a big deal in delay games, you know, but when you got 320 left in a game, and it's only a, at the time is a tie game, and now a one-point game, those kind of silly errors can really come back to hurt you at the end. Yeah, that's a free throw that you know, wish you maybe didn't give them and Helton did make it to a one-point game for the Express. Approaching the three-minute mark here from Champagne, and a nice pull up there from Helton again. Helton measured it up, eyed it, tried to see if he couldn't get it some extra space, was able to put it up with a lot of confidence and get it to fall. 23 for him, averages 24. Three-point ball game lobbed into Rogers. No double team coming, he'll put it up in the lane. Nope, didn't make it. Express did a nice job that time of collapsing in on the inter interior, making sure that Rodgers didn't get an easy look at it. Still should have been a basket he made, but the Express were right there to get the rebound. With 10 to shoot, Meyer goes to work, 
little righty hook is good. Not the most conventional shot you'll see, but he works in warm-ups on that type of thing where the quick little drop, little right hook going into the towards the basket, and that time he made it fall, and it was a huge basket for his team. The Swarm will take a timeout. We mentioned in the opening, the Express have trouble closing games. They haven't had trouble right at this point yet. 2.14 to go. They've taken the lead back 80, make it 92 to 87 over the Champaign Swarm on mpba.tv. Sky Medlin with Nate Garlock back here in Champaign, Illinois. Parkland College, where they had two games already this afternoon. Parkland's women's and men's team played prior to this Champaign Swarm and Lima Express game as the Swarm try to get back in it. Rogers with a nifty move has 24 in the game. Nice job coming out of the timeout. Draw, drew up a play to get Rogers underneath and got an easy bucket. 92-89, two minutes to go. As the foul is called, late whistle, but it's there. Helton went up for the shot. Now does he go to the line is the question. He will. Nice job by Helton that time. It looked like he wanted to take the shot, but he saw McGlade closing quick. So he was able to draw, uh, draw McGlade off his feet and able to get, um, get the foul so he get to the line. Free throw is good. These are huge free throws for the Express. Luckily for them, they have Helton on the line, who's their best free throw shooter. Made both of them that time to extend this lead. And it's 94-89. Shot and miss from the outside. That's a shot you can live with. You know, you can't be too upset from a play taking that shot. He's your best three-point shooter. He was wide open. If he makes that basket, you're only down by two. It was a, it was definitely the right decision and the right call by him. Here's Myers going to work inside, and he scores again. 22. They just, they just do not have an answer for Kyle Myler inside. 96-89 and a minute 17, a foul there. We'll get a couple of free throws with that clock frozen for the Swarm and McGlade will go to the free throw line. McGlade trying to make something happen, trying to get to the get to the rim, see if he couldn't get the layup. He's hoping he could get an and one situation. Johnny Elliott did a good time, a good, a good job that time of making sure that that ball did not find its way into the basket. McGlade just 25% from the foul line this year so far. As you mentioned, 50% from three point range. This is inside his range, and he makes one of two there. That time, defensive pressure by the Swarm caused Helton to throw the ball away. Now they're getting an extra possession here with a minute 13 left in the game. 96 90. 
these are the mental mistakes that Mark Anderson talks about with his team, and it's why they have such a hard time closing out the game. McGlade, now Coleman drives the lane, high off the glass, it will not go in. Here's Myers quickly down and lays it home. That might do it. 98-90 with a minute to go. McGlade tried to get in his way, see if he couldn't distract him to alter that shot. That time Meyer didn't bite, took it up strong. McGlade, kind of a desperation three, well short. Ball on the floor and a jump ball called. Jump ball. Good hustle there and no quit from the Swarms. Stoudmeyer and he'll jump it up with 45 seconds to go, trying to get possession back in the hands of Champagne. He's a little upset. He thought that he was going to be able to get the timeout, but the Express were right there to tie him up to cause this jump ball. It's going to be Johnny Elliott again trying to jump. Elliott, one of the best jumpers on the court, though. Now we're going to decide who's actually going to jump. I think they got the, definitely the right guy in Stoudmeyer. He was the only white jersey around that ball. Elliott's going to stay in there, and the tip is controlled indeed by Champagne. Shot missed by Rogers, but tipped in by Stoudmeyer. Nice job by Stoudmeyer that time, and staying in, sealing out his defender so he could get the offensive rebound and a put back for two. And now we play the foul game with 37 seconds to go and a six-point express lead. And with the way that this express team shoots free throws as a team, this works in the Swarm's favor trying to get back in this game. Sometimes it works to your detriment, but it's definitely a benefit for the Swarm to put them on the line to see if they can't close this gap a little bit by forcing the express to make these free throws. Ballard makes the first one 74% on the year. And a timeout called with 37.1 to go, 99-92. The Express with the lead over the Swarm on MPBA.TV. No more, it's none of my business. No more, he didn't mean it. No more, not my problem. No more, she was flirting with him. No more, she was asking for it. No more, boys will be boys. No more, I'll say something next time. No more bystanding. No more ignorance. No more excuses. No more. from Champaign trying to win their first MPBA game of the season in a bit of trouble here. 99-92. The visiting Lima Express with the lead and some free throws here for Stout, or I'm sorry, wrong team. He finishes off the two free throws. Does Cordero Ballard, he's got 16, the lead is eight. Well, we're going to have to make some quick baskets here if they're going to stay in this game. Neville misses, gets it back, though. It's McGlade from way out there, no good. Another offensive board, and then they threw it away. That'll do it. Don't believe they're going to try another shot, but, yeah, the coach said no shot. James Helton made it anyway. 102-92 as the Lima Express are gonna win this one. Neville from deep three, not there. One more attempt is short, and that is your ball game. Lima wins it, 102-92. Going to two and two on the young season. 0 and four for the Swarm, as they fail to win a home game again here at Parkland College in Champaign. We will take a break, hopefully have a couple of players or a coach to talk to 
as we wrap it up. Again, Lima wins at 102.92 on MPBA.tv. There he goes again, mixing sauces. Hot barbecue to Parmesan garlic and back again. You're not on the same page of the playbook, are you? It's time to speak up. Next time lover boy goes to mix, set him straight. We're gonna stop mixing sauces now, okay? Thank you. Grab a seat. The game is up. Both of the wild wings, wings, spear, sport. Dude right here in them tight old slacks. Oh, look at that handline, man. It's way pushed back. And that tie is mad ugly. It's a horrible pick. Somebody get me some pills. This dude is making me sick. True that, true that. All right. Okay, okay. Hold on to my clean shirts and please don't get them dirty because I know you're going to drool when you hear me getting wordy. Because I'm a walking, talking, smacking human encyclopedia. You thought I'd stop there, but now I'm getting greedier. I'm a promotion in motion and by now you got the notion that I got strategic plans coming out my ears. My key points and decks will bring y'all to tears. Turning pennies into dimes, I shift paradigms. But how you going to let a marketing rep rip your rep and slip a depth rhyme schemes and let your mind only dreams in? I bet you all wonder why my rhyme is so tight. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Thanks. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. Back in Champaign, where Lima has wrapped up their second win of the young MPBA season with a 102-92 victory over the Champaign Swarm. And Coach Mark Anderson has joined us. Coach, congratulations on the good game. It's got to feel good to come to Champaign and win the second game of the year. Yes, thanks, Nate. It does. It, you know, it was a long ride over. We got here around 1 in the afternoon. Uh, we had a chance to sit back and relax. and. It's kind of nice not getting right to a place and then within two hours playing. So we didn't play real well today, and that's why I told the guys there the last couple seconds of the game, but we got out of here with the win, and that's something that we needed. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a new game, but it's kind of the same story for the season's gone for you guys so far. Third you, quarter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's been the third quarter. You guys have started off pretty well. <laughs> Even today, it was still a little slow, but you still had the lead going into the halftime. Coming to that third quarter, though, it seems like the guys have a hard time making adjustments out of halftime. How do you guys fix that? I, if I if I knew Nate, it would have been fixed <laughs> already. But the, you know, it's it's one of those things. I don't know what it is. I mean. It's not like we, we, we come out and we sit around. I mean, we're doing the same thing that other teams are. We're warming up. We're talking about what we're doing at, you know, at the half, what we want to come out and do. But we don't talk about, I, I quit talking about having slow starts because I don't want to plant that seed. But it's something we've got to correct because a good, you know, at some point it's going to really catch it. Well, that's what cost us in the first game against the River Sharks. Yeah, you know. third quarter. Right, and you know, the, the River Sharks and, and your second game, it was a, one of those things where you guys started off well. Last week, you know, it was another thing. You guys started off very well, um, you know, a, allowed the Blues to get back in the game, but found a way to hold on to that lead and, right. and end up coming home with the victory. And, and it came back to play here again today. You guys had the lead, allowed to come back in. They actually took the lead on you towards uh, the end of that second half, but the guys were able to figure it out and we're able to build on that lead and finish off the game at the free throw line. You had to be happy to see that. Yeah, we missed, we were two for six at one point in the third quarter. Weren't we down three in the fourth quarter with about seven minutes to go yep. somewhere in that neighborhood? Yep. And then fought back. And then, you know, that's one of the things that with these guys, with my guys, is that you just, we got to keep after it, you know. And we keep talking about that 48 minutes. It's such a long game, and it's a game of runs. We just happen to have the last run of the game, and time ran out. So, you know, the Swarm, they, they keep playing hard. Yep. And you guys had a couple of contributions from guys who you don't normally see get some. Aaron Cross came in, gave you nine big points. He's right. usually not one of your main scorers. You know, uh, guys like Johnny Elliott, who used, you're used to coming in and giving you some points, and, and he's able to, to give you a spark. Yeah, he actually finished with, he finished with zero points <laughs> on the game this time. Jeez. Co uh, you know, uh, and Ballard, he, he struggled tonight. He, he only shot 38% for the game. 
and that's usually not something you're going to get out of him. But you had guys like Meyer who really stepped up, and it must be nice to have guys like Meyer and Helton who are going to step up when other guys are kind of slacking. And some of your guys off the bench came in and gave the team a nice spark. Well, and that's that's something that I've really told the guys. If you get hot and score, I'm going to leave you in. And that that's when Aaron had his fourth foul, but he was still hitting shots. But during uh, when we called timeout, it was a mandatory timeout with a couple minutes to go, I said literally that Kyle and James Helton are the two guys that have been scoring almost every trip down. We got to keep feeding it. And, and then Cody became the facilitator and Johnny went to the two guard and we played out of it. I really liked the way Ed, you know, he didn't play in the first quarter, went in in the second quarter, played nine solid minutes, something like that. Same situation in the second half and he facilitated what we needed out there. And you know, that's what I keep telling these guys. You never know when your opportunity is going to present itself. And when it does, go out there and, and take it and, and see what happens. And if you're playing well, I'm going to do my best to keep you in there. It was definitely a game of, of runs, as you talked about earlier. And, and it was at times it looked like maybe you guys were a little out of sync. The guys found a way to get back. Going into that fourth quarter, though, you know, we were talking about it off air. It was... It was almost a surprise to see you guys in the lead. You guys were actually trailing in almost every category, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throw percentage. You guys really came alive in that fourth quarter, though. From the third quarter to the fourth quarter, you ended up finishing with 52% from the free throw line, ended up shooting uh, over 50% from the floor. It, it had to be nice to see your guys go to the free throw line when at times this year they've almost struggled and, and be able to have that confidence to close out the game at the line. We were 52% from the floor or uh, free throw line. Uh, that's what I believe it showed uh, me yeah. here. That's that's not good. That's not going to win many ball games. Well, it's a lot better than what it started off at because you guys right. going into that fourth quarter it was only 38%. So 38%, the, 38 oh going gosh. into the fourth quarter. So yeah, the guys did step up, and it's got to be nice to at least know when it comes crunch time, the guys can get to the line and finish off a game. Exactly. And, you know, Cody was kind of kidding me over there that I uh, iced him on that timeout, but I wanted everybody to – to get on the same page with the out of bound, our out of bounds press breaker at the end because we knew that they were going to have to come at us, but I also knew that he was going to hit. I wasn't going to ice him at this point because he was back into the game. You know, sometimes he he tries too hard, and this tonight was one of those situations. But you know, in stretches, he he hit that. Well, that three point play was huge. Okay, that put us up three, and then um, you know just facilitating that, and he'll pick points in the game where he'll take over the point guard position and do a nice job for us and he did there at the end. He has moved to 500 on the season now it's on to Bloomington tomorrow where you guys have a game at noon. What do you tell the guys when you go to the locker room to get them over this win and get them focused to get them ready to go for tomorrow's well, afternoon? They might already be on the van back to the <laughs> hotel. Uh, we got to get our got, got to get off our legs. I have a scouting report. I'm going to try to get it to them tonight. Uh, if not it'll be first thing in the morning and you know we I, I like the cellular arena. It's a nice place. Some of these guys have never been there before. So, you know, one of the nice things about getting there two hours before, they can work, shoot, and look, get used to the backdrop there in the arena. So um, it, it'll make getting up a little bit easier tomorrow morning after this win. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate Thank the you, time. Guys. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Again, the final 102-92. As the Lima Express come to town and take home the victory, as you mentioned, Bloomington, their next stop, but it'll not be until tomorrow. They'll get to spend a little time in Champaign tonight and savor the victory 35-25 in that final quarter over the uh, Swarm, and uh, they sealed the victory and walk away with a nice win. Yeah, Coach Anderson, as he was talking about, was real happy with his team's effort, and, and, and you have to be. For the Swarm, it's got to be disappointing. You know, they've gotten off to a really rough start. Still looking for their first win in the league after winning coming off championship season last year. But they're going to find a way. There's a lot of talent on this team. You know, Michael Rogers, it, he, it seems like the team kind of starts and ends with him. When he's on, the rest of the team is on. And he did his best to pull his team along there in the second half. Unfortunately, it fell a little bit short there in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he scored 12 in each half to lead the Swarm. 24 points for him. 19 for McGlade, 13 for Coleman. Stoudemire with nine, seven for Walker, six for Mills, nine for Neville. Those were all in the second half. He kind of sparked them to that lead and then uh, couldn't do much else. Uh, McLean with a single basket for uh, the Swarm to, for their 92. On the other side, uh, on the winning side, Devon Taylor Button with seven, six for Atkinson. As we mentioned, the point guard 
Johnny Elliott with no points in the game, but boy, he did a lot of other good things for uh, Coach Anderson's team. Uh, seven for Montague, nine for Cross, six for Jenkins, and then in double figures, 16 for Cordero Ballard, 24 for Kyle Meyer, and 27 is the final total for James Helton. He averaged 24 coming in, he hits 27 tonight, and his team wins 102 to 92. That about wraps it up, folks, from Parkland College here in Champaign. We appreciate you watching the broadcast tonight and uh, look forward to tomorrow's games from Bloomington. Yeah, it should be a great afternoon of basketball. Really looking forward to the two solid games over at US Cellular Arena. I'll talk to you next, uh, next Saturday night when the Swarm are home once again. We'll have that for you as well here on MBPA TV, or dot TV, I should say. Again, the final 102-92, Lima over Champaign. For Nate Garlock, I'm Scott Medlin. You have a great evening.